American Horror Story Delicate is the first season of the series to be based on source material, that being the recently released novel Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine, and today I'm going to take you scene by scene for each episode of AHS Delicate and highlight all of the similarities and the changes that were made when this story got adapted into the American Horror Story universe by this season's showrunner Hallie Pfeiffer. Without further ado, let's just start with the opening quote of the show. Just like the book, the show starts with the same Bible quote, the only difference being that the show drops the use of the word greatly. And then we get the opening scene of American Horror Story Delicate, which shows Anna Victoria Alcott lying in bed when an intruder wraps their hand around her stomach. Anna in the show is pretty similar to Anna in the book. She's an actress whose career has quickly started to skyrocket thanks to a role in an indie film called The Auteur. In the book though, I'd say she's a little bit less famous than she's depicted in the show, but more on that later. So aside from Anna's fame and some choices that she makes in relation to her pregnancy and her career, which we will get into as these uh, episodes progress, but aside from that, they've remained pretty faithful to Anna. After a brief chase between Anna and the intruder, the intruder escapes down the stairwell in the show. In the book, this event is similarly described in the prologue, only to be later built upon when it actually happens around page 60. A couple key differences here are, in the book, the intruder clearly whispers the word baby before touching Anna's stomach, and in the book, Anna defends herself by throwing a stone bust at the intruder. Then the intruder also escapes down the stairwell in the novel. The show then gives us a scene where Anna is calling the cops and she discovers that her embryo photo has been torn up and smeared with what at first looks like blood, but is later revealed to be lipstick. This is another difference from the book, as the only thing that Anna discovers after the intruder escapes is that the embryo photo has been stolen. This harkens back to the prologue of the book, which describes an old wives' tale about what would happen if your baby's photo was stolen. The next scene in the show where Dex calls Anna to tell her she's late is nearly identical to what's written in the book, but as Anna traverses through New York City, we get a couple slight alterations from the events of the book. In the show, outside of her apartment, Anna notices an exuberantly dressed woman in black and red standing over a fallen bird's nest with one of its eggs cracked open. In the book, the same thing happens, only the mysterious woman in the book is dressed far more innocuously, wearing only, not only, <laughs> wearing a blue baseball hat and giant sunglasses that disguise their face and their true identity. In another difference, as TV show Anna races to her appointment, she stops to take a photo of her movie poster, which is plastered on the side of a building. This seems like a tiny change, but it does, um, it does progress into what I would say is a big thematic change that the show has made from the book. But in this scene in the book, Anna notices the poster, but decides not to take a picture of it due to the rush that she's in to get to her very important egg retrieval appointment. We then meet Dex, Anna's husband, who in the show runs an art gallery with Talia, who we will meet later. In the book, Dex works for a tech company and Talia is the CEO of that company. Also in the book, in this scene, Dex seems much angrier with Anna for being late to the appointment. But then we meet Dr. Andrew Hill in the show, who runs the Riverside Fertility Clinic where Anna is undergoing IVF. This is one of the first major character changes that the show does, as in the book, Dr. Hill is actually named Dr. Carla Hill and is a woman. In the show, Anna then wakes up from the procedure, and this scene too is nearly identical to how it plays out in the book. Just another slight difference here, when Dr. Hill asks Anna what the date is, in the book, it's October 5th, but in the show, it's September 4th. In the waiting room, TV show Anna sees a woman reading a magazine. In the show, it's Anna herself on the cover of Elle. In the book, however, it's Siobhan Walsh, Anna's best friend and Oscar-winning actress. This, of course, is another huge change that the show has made when compared to the book, as the show swaps Siobhan's career. Instead of being an actress, Siobhan is Anna's publicist. They also change Siobhan's last name from Walsh in the book to Corbin. In the book, Anna has a different publicist by the name of Emily, 
and the show seems to have completely cut this character, morphing her into Siobhan. But in both the book and the show, the characters of Anna and Siobhan are very close friends. But back to the magazine, though, TV show Anna's L cover features the headline, Anna Victoria Alcott wants you to know what a real woman looks like which comes directly from this scene of the book, but instead of it being on Anna's L cover, it's a smaller headline on someone else's cover of Rolling Stone, which is one of those details that leads me to believe that TV show Anna is slightly more high profile than book Anna, but in reality they probably just changed this detail so it was simpler to communicate to the audience. Moving on though, in the book after seeing this headline, Anna describes feeling excited to see that the magazine is in the waiting room, but she also worries that people may think that the quote is passing judgment on people who use plastic surgery. Since she says in that article, uh, she describes standing up to a producer who wanted her to get a facelift. In the show, of course, none of this inner dialogue about the headline is communicated other than Anna rolling her eyes at the magazine cover. While leaving the clinic, Anna runs into Ms. Preacher for the first time in both the book and the show but the interaction is slightly different. In the show, Preacher seems confused when Anna assumes that Preacher knows her from her movies, but in the book, Preacher actually approaches Anna saying, you, I know you, you're Anna Victoria Alcott, right? From the auteur. To which Anna then responds with, thank you for watching, before blowing Miss Preacher off. Then in the book, Preacher takes Anna's photo in a similar way to what happens in the show. After Anna leaves the clinic in the show, she sees the mysterious woman outside in red and black, and she points her out to Dex. But in the book, outside of the clinic, Anna sees the woman in the blue baseball hat, but she doesn't tell Dex about her. The show then shows us Anna and Dex going out to lunch and discussing baby names and potential schools their child may go to. This scene doesn't happen in the book, and it's the first scene of the show that's completely fabricated by Howie Pfeiffer, this show's sole showrunner and writer. Next, the show gives us another new scene that has no counterpart in delicate condition, with Anna feeding her dog, taking the suppository, and pulling out her hair like it's a spider web. While there's nothing exactly like this in the book, later on in the story, book Anna does deal with hair loss. Before we move on though, let's talk about the dog. In the show, Anna and Dex have one dog named Oz. In the book, however, Anna and Dex have three dogs named Oz, Happy, and Peanut Butter. The dogs were a very perplexing part of the book for me because their names were not disclosed until random moments in the book, and for so much of it, they were simply just called the dogs, and I wasn't even sure how many there were to begin with. The dogs never really played a huge role in the story, so it makes sense why introducing them to us wasn't really the priority in the book, so it makes complete sense to me why the show decided to turn these three dogs with weird names into one dog with the most normal name of the three. Moving on though, the scene with Anna and Siobhan in Siobhan's office obviously doesn't happen in the book, as again, Siobhan isn't Anna's publicist in the book. The scene does show us our first glimpse at Summer Day and the dolls. In the show, Anna's big break was starring on a show called Summer Day as the character Summer Day. AHS Delicate hasn't given us too much context about the show other than it was big enough to have dolls produced of Summer. In the book, the show that gives Anna her big break is called Spellbound but she does play a character called Summer Day. The book describes Spellbound as a beloved culty show that was cancelled after two seasons. And I don't believe the book ever outright said what the show was about, but in my head it was always about magic or witches of some sort because it is called Spellbound. In the show, Siobhan gets an email that Andy Cohen wants to interview Anna on Thursday. In the book, Emily the publicist books Anna to be interviewed on Seth Meyers on Thursday. In both the book and the show, it is said to be Anna's first late night appearance. Then in the show, Siobhan tells Anna a fan wants her to sign an old Summer Day doll, which doesn't happen in the book at all, but once Anna gets to the Hamptons in the book, these dolls do start to come into the fold. In the show, Siobhan and Anna then discuss how Siobhan once had struggles with IVF as well. In the book though, Siobhan doesn't seem to have done IVF before. Siobhan's friends run a natural birthing facility that Siobhan has recommended Anna to go to in the past, so I never got the impression that Siobhan had any experience other than that. But in the book, Anna relates to Siobhan in another way. Book Siobhan has breast cancer, and Siobhan tells 
Anna that most of her friends distanced themselves after her diagnosis because they couldn't be around all of that illness. Anna relates to this because she too feels isolated from her friends as she deals with the trials and tribulations of IVF. The show tells us Anna and Siobhan met at an IVF support group, but in the book, they meet at an acupuncturist. Also as a quick sidebar, the book and the show have created an unnecessary web of publicists, so let's just take one second to sort that out. In the book, Emily is Anna's publicist that eventually gets fired due to Anna feeling suspicious of her. The book also speaks of Catherine, Anna's old publicist who retired. In the show, of course, Siobhan is Anna's publicist, and then the show speaks of Dee Dee, Anna's old publicist who she fired for unknown reasons. Why couldn't the show name the old and unimportant publicist the same name as the book? beats me, but at least it gives me content to fill this video. The next scene has Anna and Dex walking Oz in the park when Anna brings up Dex's ex-wife Adeline to Dex. In the book, a very similar conversation happens at their home, and in another big difference from the book, the show tells us Adeline is dead. In the book though, Adeline is still alive and Dex and her just got divorced. All Anna knows about Adeline in the book is what Dex told her, that they'd gotten married too soon and split because they wanted different things. During the scene in the book, Dex opens up about how Adeline was not interested in getting pregnant, but the conversation gets interrupted when Dex notices that the suppositories have been left out of the refrigerator. In the show though, this conversation gets cut short by a spider in Anna's hair, and of course, no mention of Adeline not wanting to have kids happens in the show. When Dex and Anna get home, that's when Dex notices that the suppositories have been left out, just like it happens in the book. The next scene in the show is Anna and Dex going out to dinner with Talia and Talia's partner, Theo. Now, like I said before, Talia is the CEO of a tech company that Dex works for in the book. And then in another change from the book, Talia's partner is actually a husband named Keegan, who the book mentions is a trans man. The book character of Keegan is now Theo, and while the show hasn't defined this character's pronouns, the actor portraying Theo uses they, them pronouns, according to IMDb. In the book's dinner scene, Dex and Anna are going out to dinner with Talia, Keegan, and two characters that have seemingly been cut from the show. Frank and Bianca. In the book, Frank is the CFO of the tech company and Bianca is his wife. Back to the show, at this dinner, Talia is shown unabashedly bringing up Dex's dead ex-wife Adeline, which prompts Anna to excuse herself to the restroom. But in the book, Anna excuses herself to the bathroom before she even sits down at the table. And in the restroom, book Anna takes a call from Siobhan, and Anna asks what if her eggs hatch and they're really spiders? Just like this interaction happens in the show, but notably the book takes this conversation slightly further, with Siobhan jokingly asking if Anna would sell her soul to the devil for a baby, and Anna said, that she would. After Siobhan hangs up, that's when Talia enters the bathroom and she accidentally brings up Adeline. In the book, Talia apologizes profusely, explaining how even though she's still friends with both Dex and Adeline, Talia likes to keep the two separate and not bring each other up to the other one. In the book, this conversation gives Anna doubts and questions about what led Dex to divorce Adeline. In the show though, after Anna excuses herself to the bathroom, like I said, Siobhan and Anna talk about baby spiders, and Anna asks if Siobhan thinks Dex is still in love with Adeline. Talia then enters the bathroom to apologize to Anna, but then in the show, Talia talks about her dislike for children and how she thinks it's unnecessary to bring a child into the world. This conversation between Talia and Anna never happens in the book, as Talia too is actually dealing with IVF struggles in the book. The scene in the show ends with Anna noticing a spiky pair of green heels in one of the bathroom stalls. In the book though, the shoes are just black boots. TV show Dr. Hill then calls Anna and Dex and tells them that they have two embryos and that he wants to uh, schedule the procedure on Thursday. Anna asks him to reschedule this to Friday because of her Andy Cohen interview, even though Dr. Hill warns her that it may lower her chance of success. In the book, Dr. Hill calls them at the restaurant as well, but it's only one embryo and it doesn't have any interference with Anna's Seth Meyers interview, so no rescheduling is ever brought up. This combined with that small change of having Anna take the photo of her film poster at the beginning 
to me is a clear sign that the show is making Anna's struggle between her career and her want for a child much more dramatic and pitting them against each other in more scenarios than the book goes for. And the show often shows Anna choosing things that will further her career at the expense of her baby. In the book though, it's quite the opposite. Anna begins to neglect her career more and more as her focus solely becomes a safe and normal pregnancy. In the show, we then get a scene of Anna researching Adeline. We discover she was a vegan chef and owned a restaurant called Hestia and that she died in a kitchen fire at age 30 on August 10th, 2013. If you pause the show, you can read some of the articles that Anna is reading. And one of those articles quotes Adeline explaining the meaning of the name of her restaurant. And so Adeline is quoted saying, Hestia is the Greek goddess of the hearth, home, and hospitality. What we get to do here is redefine what domesticity means. The fact that my staff is all female is no accident. Another quote reads, I believe it's my responsibility to carry on an age-old tradition of matriarchal care and nourishment with elegance and grace. In the book, Adeline is again still alive, and none of this restaurant backstory comes from the book either. Adeline's career in the book is a professor, and she lives in London. The Greek goddess Hestia never got a mention in the book either. I believe I was looking out for it because we do know that one of the later titles of an episode this season is called Ave Hestia. Due to that uh, future episode title of American Horror Story being Ave Hestia, I suspect this change of Adeline's backstory will turn out to be one of the biggest things that the show is changing from the book, but that's just speculation. Moving on though, in the show, Anna then discovers an online account named Annihilate Anna, which leaves a lot of hate comments about Anna on the internet. Then Anna watches as her embryo transfer appointment changes times in her Google Calendar. In the book, just like in the show, Anna watches her appointment change and she does begin to suspect that it may be the works of an online hater who in the book goes by the name Number One Crush. Then the show gives us a scene of Siobhan coaching Anna before her Andy Cohen interview, and during her interview Anna gets spooked by what seems to be a hallucination of Miss Preacher in the audience. In the book, this doesn't happen and nothing ever comes of the Seth Meyers interview as Anna, like I said, begins to spend less and less effort trying to salvage her career and her Oscars campaign as she begins to feel like she is being stalked. After Andy Cohen, TV show Anna finds a summer day doll in her dressing room. And like I said before, in the book, the dolls don't start showing up until after Anna has moved to the Hamptons. Later, TV show Anna finds the Anaya Anna subreddit, which is filled with posts by an account named Preacher Speaks, who insults Anna's age, appearance, and her right to have a child. In the book, though, the only time Miss Preacher posts about Anna is when she posts the photo she had taken of her at the fertility clinic. All of Io's other posts on her accounts are all conspiracy theories about widespread satanic cults. In the show, Anna then gets spooked when she finds her post-it note has been torn, and she decides to meet Dex at his gallery opening. Neither of these events happen in the novel. At the gallery, TV show Anna meets Sonia Shawcross, an artist who looks remarkably like Adeline. Sonia, who seems to be a big Anna Victoria Alcott fan, is wearing the spiky shoes that Anna saw in the bathroom at the restaurant. Nothing like this happens in the book as Dex doesn't run a gallery and Adeline is alive with no doppelgangers that appear in the book. Then in the show, Anna undergoes her embryo transfer procedure, which in the show show features terrifying hallucinations of Miss Preacher and Anna's mouth being sewn shut. In the book though, Anna describes the procedure as fast and painless. In the show, after revisiting the opening intruder scene again, Anna finds a note in her Google Calendar saying, look in the mirror. She does this and finds a mirror message saying, don't do it, Anna. No event like this happens in the book, and no messages are left in Anna's calendar until much later in the story, and they never correlate with any sort of message written on any mirrors. And that is where episode one ends, so now let's move on to episode two.
As I said in my last video, the show is really focusing on Anna making decisions that put her career over her want to have a successful pregnancy. And this is one of the most glaring differences between the novel and the show thus far. In doing this, the show is focusing much more on Anna's life in the public eye and her Oscars campaign. In the book though, Anna chooses her pregnancy over her career time and time again. As the book goes on, Anna pretty much neglects her career entirely. All right, with that thematic difference out of the way, let's start with the very first scene of episode 2. The episode starts with Anna being interviewed by the police about the break-in, a scene that also happens in the book. One major difference though is that in the show, Anna can't think of any possible suspects for the police to look into. But in the book, Anna lists three suspects, one being her online hater, number one crush, who is the book's version of Annihilate Anna, but also the show kind of paints Miss Preacher as Annihilate Anna sometimes, but that's that's unclear to me. Another suspect Anna listed was a character named Ellie Pratt, who was Anna's old neighbor who became super clingy and began wearing the same clothes as Anna. The last suspect Anna gives to the police is her old dog walker named Leon Baker who Anna fired after he had borrowed one of her dogs for the night. Also in the book, Anna brings up Io Preacher to the cops, but she tells them she doesn't think Miss Preacher really cares about her. Back to the show, throughout the episode, Anna is dealing with a skin blemish. Uh, nothing of this sort happens in the book. In the next scene, Siobhan throws Anna a surprise party after Anna is nominated for a Gotham Award. After a pep talk, Siobhan gives Anna blood red B12 capsules. In the book, nothing like this happens, no Gotham Awards, as we know from the last episode, Siobhan isn't Anna's publicist, and Siobhan doesn't give Anna B12 capsules in the book. In the next scene, the show gives us an odd conversation between Anna and Cora, the receptionist at Riverside Clinic. Dr. Hill tells Anna that she can take a pregnancy test in two weeks. Later in the scene, Anna sees a comment from Miss Preacher saying, watch out. Then Anna is startled by Dex and she stabs him in the face. Later, Anna takes a positive pregnancy test. In the book, Anna is also told she must wait two weeks for the pregnancy test, but there is no awkward call with Cora here. In the book, Preacher also doesn't reach out to Anna on social media in this way or this early on in the story. But Anna's pregnancy test in the book is also positive. The show then gives us another scene at the Riverside Clinic where Dr. Hill tells Anna to avoid any kind of stress at all, even at the expense of her career, which Anna obviously then ignores. In the book, this appointment doesn't happen at all. In the next scene in the show, Siobhan shows Anna the dress she'll wear at the Gotham Awards because apparently Siobhan's a stylist now too. Siobhan says the dress is the same one Madonna wore to the 1991 Oscars, which then prompts them to sing sooner or later in the mirror, which then in explicably shatters. In the book, nothing like this happens. Get used to it because this episode is full of scenes without any equivalence in the novel. No mysteriously cracked mirrors and no archival dresses and again no lipstick mirror messages. Next, the show gives us the most bonkers sequence of scenes that take place at the Gotham Awards which, you guessed it, never happened in the book. In the show, Anna has an interaction with Babette, a younger actress who is nominated in Anna's category, and inside, Anna gets into an argument with Hamish Moss, the director of Anna's film. Then, Anna has what might be a hallucination where she kills, or at least knocks unconscious, an overzealous fan. TV show Anna is then rushed back into the ballroom where she wins her category, and during her acceptance speech, Anna hallucinates Io Preacher, the bloody fan from the bathroom, as well as a hallucination of Dex making out with both Adeline and Sonia Shawcross. Anna then begins to puke up black liquid. Later in the show, Anna is taken into the bathrooms to be looked at by the paramedics. In the bathroom, there seems to be no trace of the fan who Anna may have hallucinated and may have killed. Like I said, nothing like these events occur in the novel, no Babette, no accidental murder, no black puke, none of that. In the show, we then get a scene of Siobhan and Anna in bed where Siobhan sings Rockabye Baby to Anna as Anna reels over her bad press. This scene too doesn't happen in the book. Next in the show, Anna and Dex drive to the Hamptons where Talia is letting them use her house. In the car, Dex says that they're close to where his mom lives, and there seems to be a tense relationship between Anna and Dex's mom. This is similar to the book, Talia does let Anna and Dex use her Hamptons house, 
but there's no mention of Dex's mom at all. Inside the house, TV show Anna finds a photo of Dex, Adeline, Talia, and Theo in a drawer in the kitchen. In the book, Anna finds a framed photo of Dex, Adeline, and Talia in a vanity drawer. Later that night, TV show Anna hears chanting coming from the basement at the Hamptons house, and her and Kamal, the security guard, investigate but find nothing. While Anna doesn't hear voices in the basement in the book, she does frequently hear footsteps in the attic at the Hamptons house. And Kamal is also there in the book, and so far he's pretty much the same as he is in the book. We then get a scene of Anna taking a solo yoga class in the TV show, and on the way home, Anna begins to bleed. This same sequence of events happens in the book, but the yoga class is more populated and Anna briefly interacts with other expecting mothers. At the hospital in the show, Ivy, an ultrasound nurse, gives Anna an ultrasound. She looks concerned, and then she leaves the room to go find a doctor. During this scene in the show, Anna is alone. In the book though, the ultrasound nurse is named Meg, not Ivy, and she does give Anna her ultrasound, she does look concerned, and then she leaves to go find a doctor. Very similar to how it happens in the show, only in the book she's described as wearing vibrant red lipstick. Also, Dex is present with Anna during this scene in the book. The next scene in both the book and the show is Anna's miscarriage in the bathroom. Later, the show reveals that Anna's baby's sex was male, but in the book it's revealed that the baby was female. Not sure why that change was made, but maybe one day we will know. The doctor treating Anna after her miscarriage in the show is named Dr. Saperstein, but in the book his name is Dr. Crawford. And then the episode ends with Dr. Saperstein revealing that Ivy wasn't one of the hospital's nurses. This event happens in the book as well, only both of these characters have different names in the book, Dr. Crawford and Meg respectively. And that is where episode 2 ends, so let's move on to episode 3. Episode 3 begins with a dream sequence where Anna envisions playing with her baby in a field of flowers, but when she tosses the baby in the air, he doesn't come back down. In the dream, Anna screams as her dress turns from white to blood red. In the book, there is no dream sequence like this. Next, in the show, Anna, Dex, and Kamal are driving, and Anna tells Dex that she thinks the cops won't be any help with the ultrasound incident since they think she made up the intruder she encountered in her apartment. After Dex 2 shows some skepticism towards Anna insinuating that Ivy, the ultrasound nurse, may have caused her miscarriage, Anna gets out of the car and says that she'll find her own way back. In the book, the police are actually able to find the mysterious ultrasound nurse in the hospital's security footage, only the picture is too blurry to make out anything other than a creepy smear of red lipstick against pale skin. The next scene in the show shows Anna having what may have been a hallucination of a fire pit in the woods, as well as Miss Preacher perched in a tree singing Rockabye Baby. Preacher then tells Anna, I've been looking for you. In the book, Anna never wanders off into the woods alone, she never hallucinates Preacher in a tree, or any of this scene. In the next scene in the show, Anna arrives home to a panicked Dex who informs her that she's been gone for hours. Anna is experiencing lapses in time, which may be due to this sedative that the hospital gave Anna without informing her. Anna tells Dex that she saw Preacher in the woods, but when the pair plus Kamal go back to investigate, there is no trace of Preacher or the fire pit. In the book, Anna does not experience these lapses in time, and there isn't a sedative given to her without her knowledge. And as a small side note, the character of Detective Wood, who TV show Dex is on the phone with in this scene, is the same name of the character in the book who is working on Anna's stalker case. Then in the show, Anna is no longer able to find the internet accounts for Miss Preacher or Annihilate Anna, and she then experiences another lapse in time, and she goes to investigate the sounds of someone seeing in the house. This is when she meets Nicolette, Talia's house manager who is also a mother to a newborn. In the book, Anna never loses track of the internet accounts for Miss Preacher or the book's version of Annihilate Anna, which is an account by the name of Number One Crush. Nicolette also does not exist in the book and is a complete fabrication of the TV show. In the book, Talia doesn't have a house manager, she just has housekeepers, which 
don't really play a big part in the story. Then in the show, Anna finds a fruit basket with a note saying that it's from Hamish, the director of Anna's film, The Auteur. In the book, there is a mysterious fruit basket that Anna assumes was sent by Talia, but it's later revealed to have been sent by Anna's PR firm. Also, I've just found this name in the book. I didn't make note of it the first time I read it, but the director of The Auteur in the book is actually mentioned at least one time, and her name is Naomi Richardson, and of course she is another character that the show has fundamentally changed and transformed into a much larger part. Then in the show, Anna has a flashback of the ultrasound, and Ivy is seen having a similar blemish as the one Anna has been dealing with since episode two. Then after another lapse in time, Siobhan shows up and validates Anna's crazy experiences as simply symptoms of her miscarriage. Anna and Siobhan then go for a walk on the beach where Siobhan tells Anna that she just got her the cover of Vogue magazine. Then Anna finds a summer day doll buried on the beach with nails in its stomach. Then out of Anna's sight, we can see two masked figures decked out in black feathers with two goats by their side watching Anna on the beach. In the book, Siobhan doesn't show up to the Hamptons house because in fact, at this point in the book, and on, the character of Siobhan is in a coma. Book Anna actually finds out about Siobhan's coma right before she finds the doll on the beach, when Anna calls Siobhan, but Siobhan doesn't answer. Instead, Gracie does, who in the book is Siobhan's adopted daughter. Gracie tells Anna that Siobhan's cancer has returned and she was placed in a medically induced coma. Then, a few pages later, Anna goes for a walk on the beach, only accompanied by a trailing Kamal for security purposes, and on this walk she finds a summer day doll in the sand, but instead of nails in its stomach, it just has a black X on its stomach, just like the one TV show Anna found in her dressing room back in episode 1. No one else is on the beach with Anna during this scene of the book. No bird ladies and no goats, but in a similar beach scene that happens later in the book, Anna does see a woman waving to her while she's on a walk on the beach before Kamal rushes Anna inside the house. And like I said, in the book, the doll that Anna finds on the beach during this scene is the first one that Anna finds, and of course in the show it is the second one. In the show, Anna hides the doll and doesn't tell anyone about it, but in the book, Kamal is present when she finds it, and he immediately sees it as a legitimate threat. Then in the show, Anna takes the doll and a bottle of wine down to the basement, where she eventually falls asleep. Once she wakes up, Anna notices a door at the opposite end of the basement. She goes inside and finds a long series of tunnels with rooms of fetuses and jars and Latin written on the walls. Just for our own knowledge, this roughly translates to Hail O Child, Hail Satan, Long Live the Children of Our Lord. Anna then gets jumped by the two masked bird people who restrain, sedate, and inject Anna. In the book, this does not happen in the slightest. There are no secret tunnels under Talia's home, no satanic lairs, no babies in jars, and again, no feather-clad satanists. There is, however, a similar scene in the book where I think the show started from and then went somewhere completely different with, and in the book, Anna goes down to Talia's basement because she knows that that's where Talia is keeping her old baby stuff from her previous IVF struggles. So she goes down there, she gets drunk on bourbon, and this is when she feels movement in her stomach for the first time since the miscarriage. The next scene in the show depicts Anna waking up in the basement and feeling movement in her stomach for the first time since the miscarriage, just like in the book. And in the show, she then tells Dex, who doesn't believe her, and she then trips and reveals the doll that was in her pocket, which causes Dex to question her even more, before he breaks down and explains how much this experience is wearing on him as well. In the book though, when Anna feels movement in her stomach in the basement, she doesn't tell anyone. There is a later scene where Anna feels more movement when she takes a shower, and she is unable to get a hold of Dex, so she calls Dr. Crawford, the doctor from the hospital, who has a very similar conversation with Anna as Dr. Hill does in the show. Only Anna doesn't ask him about dreams, because that satanic vision does not happen in the book. 
Then in the show, Anna goes to a local pharmacy where she hallucinates the bird ladies and then has a bizarre interaction with an employee named Elizabeth, who touches Anna's stomach and can feel the baby kicking. On her way home, Anna sees Dex and Sonia go into a building together, and then Miss Preacher pops out of nowhere and tells Anna to watch out for Sonia. Kamal sees this and tries to pursue Preacher, but he loses her. In the book, this scene has a lot of similarities, but the show is definitely definitely amping things up. Book Anna goes to CVS and an employee named Patricia touches Anna's stomach and can feel the baby kicking. The major differences in this scene are the name of the employee being changed from Patricia to Elizabeth, and Anna doesn't have any hallucinations or time lapses while in the pharmacy in the book. And also in the book, Kamal goes into the store with Anna, whereas in the show he's nowhere to be found, and on the way home from CVS in the book, Anna does not see any suspicious or familiar faces. Then in the show, Anna creates an event in her calendar called What Do You Want? And later someone responds with I want to warn you, they did something to your baby. Anna responds asking, did they kill my baby? She then goes outside, seemingly attracted to a scent. The mysterious person communicating with Anna through her phone calendar system then responds saying, your baby isn't dead. Anna then realizes she's been smelling a maggot infested rodent corpse as Nicolette watches from inside the house. In the book, Anna's conversation with the calendar hacker is slightly different, but it's pretty much communi communicating the exact same information. In the book, Anna asks, why are you doing this? And the other person responds saying, I want to warn you, they did something to your baby. Anna asks, did someone kill my baby? And the other person responds asking, are you sure it's dead? Soon after this calendar conversation in the book, Anna is lured inside by the smell of a dead raccoon at the bottom of Talia's empty pool. And that is the last scene that this episode covers, so let's go straight into the next episode. Episode 4 begins with the first flashback of the season, flashing all the way back to 1555 in Hampton Court, England, where Queen Mary I has just experienced an agonizing childbirth. Mary is visited by her sister, Elizabeth I, and Mary tells her that the baby is a monster. Then, two feather-clad women, who centuries later will go by the names of Ashley and Ashley, enter the Queen's bedroom and they take the newborn, who is then revealed to have long black talons. The 16th century Ashleys then curse Elizabeth to be barren. While the book has a total of nine flashback chapters that detail many women's difficult pregnancies with mysterious ties to what Anna is experiencing in the present day, none of them date as far back to the 16th century and none of them involve any real historical figures like Queen Mary I. However, there is a very similar flashback chapter about a character named Abigail Rowe in London, England in the year of 1789. In the chapter, Abigail experiences a similarly gruesome childbirth as Mary does, and the chapter ends with Abigail telling her companion, whose name coincidentally is Elizabeth, it is a monster, just like Mary tells Elizabeth in the show. However, no such people like the Ashleys appear in this chapter, nor anywhere else in the book, and the book also refrains from describing the physical appearance of the baby that Abigail calls a monster. The next scene in the show picks up from the previous episode in the present day where Anna seems to be tempted by the rotting raccoon, but her temptation is interrupted by Dex, and the pair proceed to have a tense conversation about Anna's suspicions. Soon after, Anna brings the raccoon inside the house where she is stopped by Nicolette. Anna awkwardly rushes her off, and she brings the corpse into the basement, where she then tucks it into the crib. Anna is briefly visited by a black cat. She then leaves the basement, but quickly returns when she hears chanting coming from inside. But when Anna turns on the basement light, the chanting stops and there is no one to be found. In the book, Anna is similarly drawn to the smell of a dead raccoon at the bottom of Talia's empty pool, which she first thinks is alive. When she slowly realizes that it is dead, Anna's stomach grumbles, but no further action is taken at this point in the book. Anna also never brings any dead rodents inside, nor does she put them in a cradle. And just as a reminder, Anna doesn't confront Dex about Sonia in the book, 
because Sonia is not a character that exists in the book. In the next scene of the show, Anna sees one of the bird women outside of the Hamptons house, but she doesn't tell Dex due to his growing skepticisms of her. There aren't any similar scenes to this in the book, mostly because these feathered ladies are a fabrication of the show with no counterparts in the book. Then in the show, Anna has a meeting with Siobhan where she is introduced to the Ashleys, who may or may not be the same characters who took Queen Mary's baby in the opening scene of this episode. The Ashleys are now PR course correctors here to save Anna's career post vomit gate. In the book, no such scene could possibly happen because one, Siobhan isn't Anna's publicist in the book, and two, vomit gate never happens in the book, thus three, there are no PR course correcting characters in the book, meaning the Ashleys two are another piece of this season that showrunner Hallie Pfeiffer has created for this season without any links to the source material. Next in the show, back at their NYC apartment for the night, Anna is startled by Virginia, Dex's mother that was briefly mentioned a couple episodes ago. Virginia then tells Dex that she is suing her ex-husband, Dex's father, and she needs Dex to testify in court. In the book, Dex's mom is only mentioned once, and it's just to note that she lives in Massachusetts, and her name is never mentioned. Of course, in the show, she has a name and lives in the Hamptons, and is another almost entirely new addition that the show has created. The next scene in the show depicts Anna beginning to pull out large clumps of her own hair. Then Anna destroys the cracked mirror with the lipstick message at the apartment. At a later point in the book, Anna experiences very similar hair loss, only it occurs at Talia's Hamptons house, not the NYC apartment and it is described to be much more graphic than the show depicts, with Anna describing the sensation like worms between her skull and her scalp, and the hair loss and pulling in the book is much bloodier. Next in the show, Dr. Hill confirms that Anna's baby is still alive, and he tells Anna that she is experiencing vanishing twin syndrome. In the book, Dr. Hill has a very similar conversation with Anna and Dex, where she explains vanishing twin syndrome to them after after successfully finding the baby's heartbeat. In the show's next scene, outside of the Riverside Clinic, Anna sees Ivy, but Dex and Kamal are unable to track her down. No such scene happens in the book. Then in the show, Siobhan and Hamish make love, and Siobhan confirms with him that Anna cannot know about the two's relationship. Siobhan then threatens Hamish to keep the true origins of his script for the auteur a secret. In the book, unsurprisingly, none of this happens. These two characters, of course, are two that have been drastically changed from their book counterparts. Siobhan's role has obviously been tripled from what it was in the book, and the role of this film director has multiplied by like 50. Like I stated before, or in the book, the auteur is directed by a woman named Naomi Richardson, and I believe she is only mentioned one time in the book. And of course, Naomi Richardson has been turned into Hamish, who is now having an affair with Siobhan. Then in the show, Anna films the reel that the Ashleys pitched to her, and the Ashleys watch as the video becomes viral online. In the book, again, there's no Ashleys, no vomit gate, and therefore there is no reel. Then in the show, at lunch with his mom, Virginia, Dex tells her that Anna's mom died when she was only three weeks old. The conversation then turns to the reasons why Virginia is suing Dex's dad. With the help from her psychotherapist Eugenia, Virginia has uncovered memories of her of the satanic rituals that Dex's father subjected her to over the course of their marriage. In the book though, it is stated that Anna's mom died in a car accident when Anna was nine years old, not three weeks. And then, again, this character of Virginia and her conflict with Dex's dad is all completely fabricated by Hallie Pfeiffer without any parallels in the source material. Then in the show, Nicolette congratulates Anna on the pregnancy and delivers to her a bouquet of roses. After Nicolette leaves, Anna discovers a card with the roses that reads, you can't trust any of them. Again, in the book, the character of Nicolette doesn't exist but Anna does get a very similar message to the one in The Roses, only in the book the message is left in her Google Calendar. After Anna creates an event asking, why are you doing this to me? A response is later added saying, you can't trust them, you can't trust anyone. The next scene in the show shows Anna pulling out the photo of Dex, Adeline, Talia, and Theo that's in the kitchen drawer, 
and Anna watches as Adeline's face transforms into Sonia's. Anna then proceeds to eat an entire jar of pickles and a carton of Ava DuVernay, Ben, and Jerry's. In the book, Anna does revisit the book's version of this photo, which again isn't in the kitchen, it's in the bathroom, and it at first only seems to be of Dex, Adeline, and Talia, and importantly when Anna first discovers the photo, it's in a picture frame. In the book, just before the sequence where Anna pulls out clumps of her own hair, Anna accidentally breaks this picture frame, and she realizes that part of the photo had been folded over. Once Anna flattens out the photograph, she realizes that someone had been deliberately cropped out and it's Meg, the ultrasound nurse, which is the book's version of Nurse Ivy. But then in the show, Anna hears chanting coming from the door in the basement, and when she tries to open the door, an unseen force pushes Anna back, and she is knocked out when her head hits the cement. Anna later wakes up, and she finds out she's been nominated for a Golden Globe just as she begins to feast on the rotting raccoon in the crib. In the book, Anna doesn't end up eating that raccoon from the backyard, but much later she continues to experience cravings for raw meat, which do cause her to eat a neighborhood cat. And episode 4 ends with the raccoon feast, so let's now move right on to episode 5 entitled Preach. The mid-season finale begins with another flashback scene, this time taking place in 1987 Manhattan, where Io Preacher, a young fashion designer, gives birth with the help of Dr. Hill and two of the Bird Women. In the book, the very first flashback chapter is actually centered on Io Preacher as well, and it too takes place in 1987. However, the show and the book take this Preacher flashback in entirely different directions. In the book, Preacher is not a fashion designer, and this flashback chapter is about her experience being someone else's surrogate. It's a very brief chapter, but it describes Preacher's own horrendous pregnancy in which she experiences dry skin, bloody gums, and upsetting cravings similar to Anna. It's also largely focusing on how Preacher was a young, poor, and impressionable person who was heavily persuaded into being a surrogate mother, which she had little knowledge about at the time. Also in the book, Preacher is 20 years old at the time of her pregnancy, but in the show, Preacher says she was 25. Then in the show, Virginia and Dex discuss Virginia's lawsuit against Dex's father, and Dex refuses to testify. In the book, this doesn't happen as, again, the lawsuit is a brand new storyline in the show, as is every single detail and characterization of Virginia, who only gets a nameless mention one time in the book. The next scene in the show shows Anna running into Babette at Siobhan's office. Anna then confronts Siobhan about taking Babette on as a client. Siobhan coldly tells Anna not to interfere with her business. In the book, of course this does not happen as again, Siobhan is not Anna's publicist and Babette Eno does not exist in the book either. Then in the show, back at the Hamptons house, TV show Anna discovers that her fridge has been fully stocked with the Ava DuVernay ice cream. Then Anna once again looks at the photo in the kitchen drawer, where she now sees Ivy appear in the background before Ivy disappears from the photo once again. Like I've said a couple times now, this photograph definitely has a book counterpart, but it's far less mystical in the book. In the book, Anna breaks the picture frame and realizes that Meg, the book's version of Ivy, has been cropped out. Once that revelation happens, Anna never really revisits the photo, the physical photograph again. Also, Anna never sees any apparitions in the photo or anything like is depicted in the show. Then in the show, after a day in court, Virginia sees hallucinations of four bird women, as well as some goats and an angry dog. Virginia then runs into Miss Preacher, who tells her that she needs to talk to her. In the book, there is no scene like this with Virginia, as again, the character of Virginia is never involved with the plot in the book. Then in the show, Preacher tells Virginia all about how she got pregnant after a one night stand when she was 25, and soon after, Preacher was approached by a woman who said that she could help her if Preacher gave her the baby. Preacher explains that she still doesn't know why she wanted the baby, but Preacher has many theories that are met with skepticism 
when she posts them online. Preacher also says that the woman told her that she would give Preacher the world if she gave her the baby. And while Preacher admits that she soon after sold her patent for her handbag to a then unknown Mark Jacobs and has been living off of those sales ever since, she says that it is still not enough. Miss Preacher then warns Virginia that the alleged cult is now after Dex and Anna because they are angry with Dex because, according to Preacher, one of their largest players deflected from them because she fell in love with Dex. Virginia asks if Preacher is talking about Adeline, but Preacher shushes her and warns her that they are likely being watched. In the book, Preacher does not meet with Dex's mom, but she does eventually meet with Anna at a bar, much later in the book. In this meeting between Preacher and Anna, Preacher similarly spills some theories to Anna, but these theories are much different than the ones in the show. In the book, Preacher details how she never saw her baby after it was born, and again, she was a uh, surrogate mother in the book, and how she was never interacting directly with the members of her suspected cult, and everything went through her doctor, and it is in this scene when Preacher reveals to Anna that her doctor back in 1987 was Dr. Carla Hill. Preacher then warns Anna in the book that she thinks Dr. Hill is doing the same thing to her and will give Anna's baby to the cult. And while Preacher goes on and on about this widespread satanic cult, she admits that she has no idea why they need to steal children. The next scene in the show shows Dr. Hill visiting Anna and Dex at their apartment where Anna is experiencing rib pain. Dr. Hill is very dismissive of Anna's symptoms, then he tells her that she cannot travel for the remainder of the pregnancy. Dex protests this because the Golden Globes are a couple of weeks away, and that prompts Dr. Hill to ask the couple, what is more important, a baby or an award? In the book, there isn't any scene that I can cite as a direct source for the scene in the show, but Anna's baby does break her ribs just before Dr. Hill first finds the baby's heartbeat, and again, playing into how the show is heightening Anna's choices to further her career at the expense of her pregnancy. In contrast, the book doesn't pay much attention to the award shows that aren't the Oscars. However, much later in the book, when on the day of the Oscars, Dr. Hill similarly and strongly suggests that Anna be on bed rest after Anna had collapsed in the Hamptons house. Because of this bed rest order, Anna does not travel to the Oscar ceremony that were taking place that night in the book. Then at physical therapy, TV show Anna pulls out more clumps of her hair, she hallucinates some goats, and then she finds another summer day doll in the locker room. In the book, again, there is no scene that resembles any of what is happening in this scene exactly, aside from the hair loss that Anna is experiencing, which we've discussed before. In the next scene in the show, Sonia Shawcross shows up early to dinner at the Hamptons house and she catches some piercing glances from Nicolette. Anna apologizes to Sonia, and Sonia gives Anna a baby gift, which Anna does not yet open. Anna tells Sonia about how she thought Sonia was following her since she had seen someone wearing the green heels that Sonia later wore at the gallery. Sonia scoffs at this and claims that she would never wear green. In the book, again, nothing like this happens because Sonia does not exist, and neither does Nicolette, and Anna never knows who was wearing the black boots that she saw in the bathroom at the restaurant. Then in the show, Siobhan has dinner with Hamish, who demands she tell him the truth about the script for The Auteur, which he says Siobhan gave to him and told him to put his name on it, and cast Anna as the lead. Hamish doesn't even know the true writer of the script, but in this scene, Siobhan provides no explanation. In the book, again, Hamish doesn't exist, and there's never any shady origins of the auteur's script that is brought up. Then in the show, Anna asks Nicolette if she knows Sonia, and Nicolette says that she does not. Nicolette then opens the gift from Sonia, which is a decorative owl. And again, there is no comparable scene in the book as neither Nicolette nor Sonia exist in the book. In the next scene in the show, Anna arrives at her apartment building, which catches her off guard because she thought she was going to her physical therapy office. She then discovers Cora, who has been living in the same apartment building for 15 years, will be conducting Anna's physical therapy from her own apartment. During this appointment, Cora refuses to stop touching Anna even after Anna asks her to many times. And then the appointment abruptly ends. 
patients. Cora is not a physical therapist in the book. Her duties are mostly restrained to being the receptionist at the Riverside Clinic, and there is no unsettling physical therapy appointment in the book either. Then in the show, Anna tells Dex about what happened with Cora during the appointment, and Dex does not believe her, and this prompts an argument where Dex admits that he actually does not believe any of what Anna tells him in regards to what is happening to her. Anna then goes downstairs and watches as she loses the Golden Globe to Babette. Anna then coughs up what looks like screws or nails, and she then hears laughter from the mysterious door, and just then she gets a call from Siobhan. Siobhan asks Anna if she wants an Oscar as much as she wants a baby, and Anna says that she does. Siobhan then asks Anna if Anna will do anything that she tells her, in order to make that Oscar happen, and Anna says yes. She is then grabbed and pulled off screen by a pair of red gloves. While none of this exactly happens in the book, there are a couple similar scenes. First of all, Anna does not cough up nails in the book, but she does cough up teeth in what is later revealed to be a hallucination, I believe. And Siobhan and Anna do have a similar phone call that happens much earlier in the book, but it's solely about Anna's want for a baby and not an Oscar. Right after Anna's miscarriage in the book, Siobhan calls Anna, and Anna says that she will do anything to have her baby back. And Siobhan says that she will do anything to make that happen. In the book, the night of this phone call is is when Siobhan falls ill again, and this is the last time that Anna talks to her before Siobhan was placed in a medically induced coma. Then in the show, Dex wakes up Anna and shows her an article with the headline, Golden Globe winner Babette Eno decapitated in car crash. If you pause the show, the article also states that the accident occurred almost immediately after the ceremony. Just then, Anna gets a call from Siobhan. In the book, Babette doesn't exist and nothing like this happens. And that is how American Horror Story Delicate ended the first half of this season that has been split up due to the Hollywood strikes. But if you're seeing this video, then that means that the strikes are finally over and hopefully the actors got a good of or an even better deal than the writers recently did, and the cast and crew of this show can go back to finish part two. I will have a review going up soon of the season, so I won't give away too much of my thoughts, but I did want to end this video detailing some of my favorite and least favorite changes that the show made from the book Delicate Condition by Danielle Valentine. I'm not going to spoil anything that happens from this point on in the story, but this discussion kind of tiptoes around the ending of the book, so if you don't want to have any clue as to where this story may be going, you may want to click away here. But let's start with my worst changes, the first of which being, in the book, while Anna stays at the Hamptons house, the setting is snowy and the snow often adds a lot to the atmosphere and the isolation to the story. In the show, of course, not a single snowflake has fallen in the Hamptons despite the season taking place during the late fall and early winter. I love horror that utilizes weather to its advantage, like the rain in Suspiria or the hurricane in I Still Know What You Did Last Summer, or the snow in The Shining, or a more recent example, last year's No Exit. So. To me, it feels like it was a big missed opportunity to not try and replicate the winter weather that is described in the book. But it is understandable considering that this season was filmed in the hottest months of the year. Hopefully, once filming does kick back up again, they can take advantage of some natural winter weather for part two of the season. And my second worst change that the show has made from the book, it's that goddamn photograph in the kitchen. The way they changed a perfectly good dramatic reveal that could have been replicated so well into the visual media into a never-ending crossfade showcase that holds no real value in relation to the events that are occurring to Anna. It's really absurd and I cannot see why the show has chosen to do this. When it first happened with the Bob jump scare, I thought that that would be the last time that that happens, but no, Anna keeps coming back to this photo and hallucinating more random shenanigans going on in it like, like someone installed Photoshop in her psyche. For the most part, the changes that the show is making make sense and they mostly just are amping up the drama and expanding some underutilized characters in the book, but this one just feels like they took a really effective plot device from the book and turned it into a nonsensical object that doesn't actually reveal anything to Anna or the audience. Alright, so 
those are the only bad changes that I can think of, but there are a couple that I think we should keep an eye on as they are changes that aren't necessarily bad, but they could easily turn out to be terrible in the concluding half of the season. For one, it's Siobhan's character change as a whole, and more specifically her focus on furthering Anna's career and not necessarily just being Anna's friend and helping her along this pregnancy. Siobhan's character in the book is a much better friend to Anna than Siobhan is turning out to be in the show, and I think this change will only become more and more jarring when compared to where the two characters end up in the book, and it just seems like this slight alteration in Siobhan's character and attitude towards Anna will have major implications down the line. But now let's get into the changes that the show has made that I am into. The first of which is the character of Virginia, played by Deborah Monk. I'm really intrigued by her storyline thus far, as it doesn't have any comparison at all in the book, and I really want to know more about these allegations that she is making against Dex's father, and I'm definitely intrigued to see where those storylines go in part two. In the same vein, another change that I really like is that the show is much more heavy-handed with its satanic overtones, which is very much in line with American Horror Story, but it still feels like it's not not yet retreading any ground. The Bird Women, the Satanic Lair, and Virginia's lawsuit are all fabrications of the show with no book counterpart, and I think they are all serving this TV show adaptation very well. In the book, the satanic angle comes almost solely from the mouth of Miss Preacher, who the book eventually dismisses as a conspiracy theorist. We'll see if this difference still stands when the rest of the season airs, but to me it seems like there is definitely some truth to the murmurs of Satanism in this season of AHS. And finally, another change that I think is serving the show very well is the heightened focus on Anna's career and her image in relation to her want for a healthy pregnancy. Book Anna clearly prioritizes her pregnancy over her career, and in the show it's clearly the other way around, and I think this has provided for some of the season's strongest moments, such as the scenes at the Gotham Awards. I will say though, it does not always make sense to me why Anna makes these choices that will clearly com complicate her pregnancy. The show isn't taking those extra measures to unpack why Anna is so locked in on her awards campaign when book Anna couldn't care less once her pregnancy began to get complicated. So we'll see if the second half of the season will dive a bit more into Anna's psyche in regards to these decisions, but for now the scenes of showbiz interspersed with Anna's medical drama provides for a good balance, whereas the book opted for an isolated psychological thriller as the story progressed, which definitely works really well for the book, but would not have been the move for AHS, which thrives when there are a ton of characters and a ton of conflict. Alright, there are all of the changes that American Horror Story Delicate Part 1 made from the source material. If you haven't read Delicate Condition yet and you are dying to know the places that the story may be going, I definitely recommend it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates on the second half of the season as well as some more book to show comparisons once part two ends up airing. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. <laughs>